This video is going to be focusing on section 1.2.3, the respiratory system. So our first objective today is to identify the main function of the respiratory system. Uh, this would allow you to access grade C style questions on your end of year exam paper. And our second objective is to understand what happens during respiration, uh, which is a process that takes place in your muscles as you, you exercise. This would allow you to access grade B questions on an exam paper. Now, obviously, during exercise, the body needs to take in um, a sufficient supply of oxygen and get rid of waste products in the muscles while they're working. So as oxygen is breathed in um, and carbon dioxide is breathed out, um, there's a process called gaseous exchange that takes place, um, which we'll look at in a bit more detail on the following video. Now, an efficient respiratory system allows more oxygen to reach the blood uh, and consequently more oxygen enters the muscles. This is obviously important because the harder and longer um, the physical activity time, the more oxygen is needed to keep the muscles working and the more carbon dioxide that is produced. Now, in terms of the respiratory system, it's made of um, a variety of different components, which I'm going to outline to you now through this diagram here. So obviously, the first point is the nasal passages. Now, air enters the body through the nasal passages during normal breathing. Air passes over the larynx, um, which helps you produce sounds for speaking. The air then passes down the trachea to the lungs. Now the trachea is a flexible tube uh, stiffened by rings of cartilage, which you can see if you look at the arrow here, I'm just identifying to you there. The next phase is the bronchi. So the trachea splits into two bronchi, uh, carrying air into each of the lungs. The bronchi then split into smaller tubes called bronchioles and that distributes the air to the alveoli. Air eventually reaches millions of tiny, tiny air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. Um, now their walls are, are so thin that gases can pass um, quite easily through them. The rib cage protects the lungs, um, but is more mobile enough to allow the chest to expand and contract during breathing. So as you're breathing uh, in and out, um, the ribs allow you to do that. And then the muscles between the ribs help your chest to expand when you breathe, and they're called the intercostal muscles. And our final one is the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is a sheet of muscle, which is just highlighted by my arrow cursor there, under the lungs. It contracts and moves down to expand the chest cavity when you breathe in. So, very simply put, the respiratory system has two main functions. One, to bring oxygen into the body, and two, to take carbon dioxide out of the body. So, this term, respiration. Um, now, respiration... Um, is the process that takes place in living cells which helps to release energy from food molecules. Now on the screen now you're going to see what happens um, during that process. So the first phase is glucose from the food is used to fuel exercise and we talked about glucose as we um, went over the cardiovascular system. So glucose from food is used to fuel the exercise. Now oxygen is required to break down the glucose to produce that energy. Now this energy is then used by the muscles to make it contract, to make it work. And this is called respiration. So waste products, including carbon dioxide, are produced as a result of these chemical reactions. And then these must be re removed and excreted by the body. So we've got glucose um, from, f from the food to fuel the exercise, oxygen to break down the glucose to help produce energy, and that, help, that, that creates respiration. Um, and then because of the respiration and, and the energy, um, the, there's waste products such as the carbon dioxide and they're produced um, because of the reactions and they must be removed and excreted. So obviously, um, if we have a look at the mechanisms of breathing, inspiration and expiration. So in the first diagram on your left hand side, we're going to have a look at breathing in. So you've got two views there, the front view of the chest and the side view of the chest. So when we breathe in, as you can see on the screen, these are the things that happen. And then as you breathe out, 
these are the things that happen to the to the key components of of the body this might be a good point to to pause and just have a little look through through those phases um, again so you've got a bit more of a greater understanding So gaseous exchange at the alveoli. Um, we'll talk in more detail about this in the following video, but I want to give you a brief overview of what this is. So um, the picture um, shows the alveoli. Now the bunches of tiny, tiny air sacs inside the lungs. Each individual sac is called an alveolus. So you've got alveoli, which is the, the big sac there, and the alveolus, which is the very small, small ones there. Now when you breathe in, they fill, fill with air. Now, the alveoli are covered in tiny, tiny capillaries, um, the blood vessels, um, and gases can pass through the thin walls of each alveolus and capillary into the bloodstream. Gases can also pass from the bloodstream into the alveolus. Now, two other terms that you need to be aware of are tidal volume and vital capacity. Now, tidal volume is the amount of air inspired or breathed in and expired, breathed out with each normal breath at rest or during exercise. And vital capacity is the greatest amount of air that can be made to pass into and out of the lungs by the most forceful inspiration and expiration. Now these two measurements help to estimate the efficiency of the respiratory system. Um, and obviously it's important to be able to define um, tidal volume and vital capacity as you may be asked this on the exam paper. That brings us to the end of what the respiratory system is. The following video is going to look at um, the effects of exercise on the respiratory system.